18. The Lord, who is he close to? David has a revelation here that will thrill your hearts. He's close to the broken heart. Are you broken hearted today? He's close to you. If you're feeling all alone, rejected, and totally abandoned, read this verse. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And He saves those who are crushed in spirit. He saves those. Ask this morning, folks, and receive God's love and encouragement because He is very near to you right now. He is near to you. God can work with a heart that is broken and has a hole in it because the need is so great for it to be filled. Thirdly, even though your heart is broken, reach out to others. As God has reached out to you, you must be an instrument of healing to the others who are hurting at this time. Reach out and help others who are in pain. Solomon recognized the fact that people need to be comforted. And so he too wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 1, he says, Again, I looked and I saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they have no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressor, and they have no comfort. Ask God this morning to use you to encourage others. Even though you are hurting, one of the best medicines is for you to encourage others and you get encouraged. By your own pain, you will be able to understand and help in a far greater measure. You see folks, Christ our Savior was in all points, the Bible says, tested and understands all that you are going through right now. He reached out to us by giving His life so that we would be healed. I believe that's what Isaiah is trying to tell us on the mission of Jesus in chapter 61 and verses 1 to 3. Let's turn there quickly and read Isaiah 61 and verses 1 to 3. I believe Isaiah is discussing here Christ's mission. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. To ground those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. And so when we come out of our pain, we glorify the Lord. Now this will come to pass in its totality when Christ returns. But in the meanwhile, we should make this our mission. To follow this example and be the instruments of healing by taking time to care for those who are in pain and hurting by reaching out to others to our own pain. Healing will then take place in our own hearts. 
I counseled a man not too long ago who told me that it took 25 years for his healing to take place. But he went on to tell me, yet there is still a hole in my heart, he said. But he added, it's much smaller now. It is much smaller now. Every time you feel God's presence, every time you see God's intervention in your life, every time you reach out to someone else, every time God grants blessings, the hole in your heart gets smaller and it is being replaced with God's heart. When Jesus finally returns, dear brothers and sisters, the hole in your heart will be filled and mended forever. There will be no more broken hearts. There will be no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more holes in your heart, for all your hearts will be filled with God's Spirit. And so we know that there will be a time when there will be no more tears. David again promises through Psalms 126 and verse 5 that those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And so a day of joy is coming. God will heal all broken hearts. We will no longer feel sad. And what we lacked in our day physically, we will be rewarded by God spiritually. God will fill our hearts and make us all complete. Hallelujah. Amen. And so whatever you go into today, there is hope. Whatever pain you're going through, no, it is temporal. For a little while we'll suffer. But one day there'll be no more suffering. No more pain. No more broken hearts. Let me close with a very interesting story that I read some time ago about carrots, eggs, and coffee beans. Carrots, eggs, and coffee beans. A couple of years ago, a young lady of about 17 came to her mother in a time of great need. This girl was scared completely, very unprepared for what was happening. Four months earlier, she discovered that she was pregnant. Now she was going to her mother to ask for any advice that she could get. She definitely belonged to another culture from ours. Without saying anything, her mother took her into the kitchen and turned on the stove. You're fearing the worst, aren't you? She took out three pots and filled it with water and turned on the heat. In the first pot, she placed a dozen eggs. In the second pot, she placed half a dozen carrots. Last spot. She, did I say carrots twice? No. no. And then in the last spot, she placed a cup of coffee beans. And then she let it boil. Her mother, Rebecca, then explained to Leanne, her daughter, after the pots had boiled for a little while, that each item in the pots had reacted differently to the boiling water. The carrots, eggs, and coffee beans all face the same trial, but each came out with different results. The eggs started off with a hard shell and liquid inside, but after the heat, the egg got hard, but still maintained its very hard shell. The carrots 
which started off strong and unrelenting, now became soft and easily crushed. The coffee beans were totally unique. They themselves did not change, but rather changed the water, releasing their wonderful, beautiful aroma into the air and flavor and color into the water. The mother then explained to her daughter that she was going to come out of all of this trial like one of these things. Would she become hardened on the inside? Would she become too soft and crushed? Or would she change her trial and turn it into something useful and good? I can tell you that Leanne turned out the letter. She turned out like coffee, coffee beans. A few months after her son was born, she committed her whole life to Jesus started to serve the Lord, was baptized, and finally found a good young fella that would marry her. And one day they were traveling to make their final arrangements for the wedding. And on the road, there was a collision, and Leanne was killed on the spot. The husband-to-be recovering in the hospital remembered the story of the carrots, eggs, and coffee beans that she had related to him, that her mother had related to her. He questioned himself about the story, and then he said, when I come out of this trial, how will I change? My dear brothers and sisters, we all have hurts. And if you haven't been hurt, it's coming soon. Somebody or some situation is going to hurt you. Will that hurt make you bitter or better? You have the choice. You can either be bitter about the hurt or be better. How will you react? Jesus said we must be the lights. And how can we be lights if we are bitter? How can we be lights if we can't shine? Irrespective of your situation, we've got to shine. Amen. Shine for Jesus. Amen. In all of our trials, He must be lifted up. Amen. And so this morning, how will you come out of your trials? How will you come out of your hurt? Bitter or better? Shall we pray?
Bring healing. Bring healing, I pray. Bring comfort today, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, to the balm of Gilead. Bring comfort today, Lord. Set your children free. Apply your ointment, Father. Apply your ointment. It is your ointment that can bring healing. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for healing today. We thank you for healing all the broken hearts. And Father, I thank you that we can trust our lives in your care. Because you care for us. You care for each one. Nobody, absolutely nobody, can care for us like you care for So we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Father God, Apply your healing balm upon your children today, I pray. Bring healing now. Bring healing now upon your people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.